Finally, I have more to share with you about one of the best looking RTS games in development using the Unreal Engine. You might already recognize I'm talking about Hyperwar if you have seen it in my previous videos, but now I have more than two dozen fresh updates for you, directly from its talented indie developer as well as a Steam store page at which you can finally wishlist this indie gem. Beyond a whole host of UI and camo changes, there are new buildings to show, new functions with walls, turrets, ammo and fuel, a brand new damage system for vehicles and turrets, a new cinematic camera and indirect control of vehicles from the first person perspective, along with the now famous pod or support gun gaining many new features. This is the massive stationary gun constructed in base which launches all sorts of supply and service barrels and boxes which can resupply units, recycle their wrecks, distribute mines and a lot more I will show you later in the video. As I mentioned in the intro, the unit damage system has had a rework, so now tank shells for example leave holes in armor where they hit. With this new feature, we can finally visually track the fact that units which have reduced health also lose their accuracy. And that is what this test range is showcasing for you here. If a unit's health drops to critical, it starts to burn from the inside, an example of which you can see here. The unit's accuracy at that point drops another degree, meaning that microing units to the back and sending them for repair in Hyperbore is going to be a very important element of gameplay. Turrets are also impacted by this reduced accuracy as an effect of low health. Later I will explain the ways to repair both turrets and vehicles and I would love to read in the comments, do you remember any other RTS game where the units lose some of their functionality when damaged? Turrets are a major part of base building and defenses in Hyperbore, along with walls, and this update adds some simple but great features for them, like the ability to relocate already constructed turrets at the press of a single key. The relocated turret does have to spend some time in the construction phase at its new location, but it is a fantastic way to remodel your base defenses to fit its expansion. This is something I came across as a problem in almost every single RTS which has base building and defensive turrets, and this is an amazing idea to fix that issue. And speaking of buildings, you can use this feature on them too and move entire buildings to a new location. Most of them at least, because the radar and main base cannot be relocated. Another function of the turrets which I have never before seen is the ability for you as the player to manually edit the attack area of a turret. When you click on one it shows you a 360 degree area in which it can attack and you can reduce this angle down to whatever you want. Since turrets do friendly fire, this way you can create overlapping fields of fire which will avoid your buildings. And because artillery units have the same type of range for their rockets and shells, you can use the same system to edit each individual unit's arc of fire, making sure they don't fire back into friendly units. Of course, I do realize how micro-intensive this looks and I will be the first one to send my feedback to the developer about finding a way to automate this process or at least use some sort of custom profiles for this. First new building added in this update to Hyperwar is the data center, however it is still a work in progress while its function is to give you much more information on all the buildings, units and turrets in the form of a list with multiple sheets. Considering the size of the maps in this game and the number of units, I consider this a worthwhile addition. The second new building is called the rocket station, but no, it does not fire anything at the enemies. What it does is to give you satellite communication over the entire map. It takes a few minutes to launch its satellites into space, but once it does, you no longer have limits on the range at which you can command units on the map, making it a type of an endgame building. 
As for building walls in Hyperboard, the click and draw command to place walls is now much simpler to do and they are also built instantly with hard points spread evenly on top of them. Dismantling these walls is as simple as just picking a wall segment you want and clicking on its context menu to destroy it. But if you need to remove a large section, you use the dismantle brush tool which makes removing walls as fast as brushing them aside. When it comes to skirmish matches, this developer went all out and prepared a huge settings menu in which you can control everything from flags and camo of you and the enemy AI, as well as resource supply, to the research speed and time of day. Not only are there three dozen settings, but also ten custom maps on which you can have any number of enemy bases, vehicles and choice of the AI difficulty level. But probably the most important option is the one that directly changes how the ammo and fuel mechanics work. Because you can choose to have the game require constant resupply of fuel and ammo for units and turrets, but also to be available only for the construction of those. So after construction of a turret or recruitment of a vehicle, they would have infinite fuel and ammo. The last option turns off the fuel and ammo mechanics completely and makes it only about metal. I think this is one of the most bold gameplay options for this developer as he is letting you as the player dictate how the game functions and pick the type of the gameplay you most like to play. Since there is no multiplayer, this choice does not impact other players and makes the single player experience quite customizable. Usually you see developers forcing their vision of the gameplay on players but this developer does not try to do this and I think this is the way, especially for an indie and only single player game. I would love to hear what you think about this in the comments below. If you want to ask about the lack of infantry units, the developer himself will be there in the comments too. And if you want to see air units in action, you can use the link up here or in the description below to see them in my previous showcase of Hyperbore. As for camera modes, the developer has added a few types of those as well. So besides the regular bird's eye view camera he named the RTS camera, there are four extra camera modes. First of these is the follow camera mode, in which the camera is snapped to a single unit on the move, but you can still zoom in and out as well as rotate it. A much more close-in camera mode is the one where your view is attached to the turret of the vehicle you are following, so it is a sort of a third-person camera mode. While the last type is the first-person camera mode, but this one is not locked to the position of the turret, so more like a vehicle's commander view camera. With the camera shake effect of combat and being this close to the action, it is definitely the most action-oriented camera mode and something to enjoy after you have made a manual save and plan to just enjoy the battle instead of commanding it. But if you want, you can actually give movement orders to units you are following in both the third and first person views. It is only when you use these more close-in cameras that you can really notice and start to appreciate all the fine little details this developer has already implemented. Like tracks left by vehicles, imperfections and dirt in the viewports, clouds of dust and debris, masterful explosions and other details like those. The last new camera type is the actual cinematic camera, which isn't locked to any particular unit, but it's almost a film director's floating camera type, where you pick the starting position of the camera, the point at which it will be turned to and the end point for it. Once those are set, it instantly transports your camera view to that exact angle and starts to slide from point A to point B all the while keeping your point of interest in the center of the camera. It is perfect for recording the entire battlefield. What gives it more utility is that you can restart the camera's path at any point, change the speed of its traversal as well as its height, angle and pitch. In addition to just changing what the camera can see, you can change how it sees it by using its settings. With a dozen options including color, bloom, dirt, depth of field, sunlight and even terrain tessellation, 
which directly impacts how real it looks and how much depth do terrain textures have. When you leave this cinematic camera, all settings return to normal, but they are saved so you can return to them once you go back to the cinematic camera. I honestly think a battle cinematic camera from Star Wars Empire at War would be a fantastic fit for this game as well, but you can share your own thoughts about that in the comments. Now I should talk a bit about the vehicle factory and its rally points for finished vehicles, which is another new addition. But it isn't as simple as you might expect, because it works in such a way that you can save several rally points on a list and choose one you want later. This list can be deleted just like you can reset the factory's build queue. But probably the most interesting and unique feature of Hypervore is its support cannon building. As I explained in the previous videos of this game, this is a huge gun which does not fire shells but pods which have different effects on friendly and enemy units. There are now even more kinds of pods starting with the regular health, ammo and fuel pods but now expanded onto recycle and mine pods. There are also the advanced versions of each meaning higher utility for a higher price. When a health pod is selected the UI immediately shows you all the units and buildings which need their health repaired. The number inside the little circle gives you an estimate of how many health pods would be necessary to bring that unit or building back to full health. When you click next to such units and the support gun fires off the pods, you can sit back and watch them fly and land, enjoying one of the most unique elements of Hyperwars gameplay. In exactly the same way, you can take a look at which units need rearming and send ammo pods near them. Fuel isn't something buildings use up, so naturally you will only see the blue UI markers on units when you select a fuel pod for dropping. When it comes to the advanced pods, their main advantage is the range at which you can send them away. This is of course balanced out by their smaller capacity and longer time that they take to reach their target. Meaning that while they might be called advanced pods, they work like smaller versions of pods which trade capacity for range at which they can be launched by the support gun. A very interesting version of these advanced long range pods is the one which can recycle units, their wrecks to be more precise. As when units are destroyed in Hypervor, they leave behind wrecks whose recycling is a kind of secondary metal resource income for the player. The amount of resources that can be gained by recycling is of course scaled according to the build cost of the unit. Lastly, the support gun has a more combat oriented pod, the one which sets up minefields on landing at the target location. One of these mine pods holds 10 mines and when you hover over the target spot, it actually shows the size of the area mines from a single pod can cover but the individual locations of mines inside that area are randomized. Luckily you can overlap these and once the support gun starts to fire these, you realize it sends out the individual mines one at a time but at a significantly increased rate of fire. The only downside is that these mines have an expiration timer and if not triggered by enemies, they will disappear on their own. Naturally, all this would be very tiring to use manually, so the developer has added an automatic mode, which you can enable in its UI on the right side once you select a support gun. This auto mode can be completely customized depending on what you want to focus on, be that health, ammo, fuel and do you want to use the advanced pods or not, as well as which type of building or unit should be supported. If you leave every checkbox filled out, the automatic mode first sends out health pods, then ammo and lastly fuel. And don't forget, since there can be multiple support guns in your base, you can give each one a separate automatic task so all are filled at the same time. Next I want to mention a ton of new settings for changing the look of the UI with different lights, colors, patterns, backgrounds and many other settings which can be saved as individual profiles. There are new UI elements like the marker settings which let you enable or disable individual markers for units on the screen. 
Now you can also create 10 custom camera positions to switch between locations you are watching with one click. Buildings in your base also received a smaller UI addition which lets you instantly jump your view between them. The top of the UI is dedicated to all the different resources in Hypervor, where you can see not just the current amounts, but also the maximum amount of them you can store at your base. If you choose to transform your storage points into ammo or fuel, this is also where you will track the conversion process. A really interesting display here is the one that shows buildings which can produce units, and when more units are added to the recruitment queue, you can see how many in that section of the UI, and if you hover over it, it shows you their names and progress. Now, just like you can edit the colors and patterns of the UI, you can do the same for camo of units. The best part is that you can change their camo during missions, which you couldn't do in the previous development build of this game. This visual customization of units is something we can rarely see in RTS games, and it is the reason I consider this a great feature. This is something another NTRTS titled Global Conflagration also has, and you can see my in-depth video on it using the card on the screen. Last but not least, I wanted to remind you of another feature Hyperbore has, and that is one-click formations, by which you can command any number of units. This is another work in progress, but coupled with the new cinematic camera and the stunning visuals of the Unreal Engine, this feature lets you set up totally amazing modern combat which looks even more appealing at dusk or nighttime. I think you will agree, this game has insane potential and it's progressing well. I will bring you more updates as soon as they are available and don't forget to wishlist Hyperwar on its Steam store page, link to which is in the description as are links to more similar artist games I have showcased on my channel. Thank you for watching and happy gaming.